the 18th edition of the Times Techies webinar. My name is Shilpa Fadnes. My colleague Sujit John and I will be moderating today's discussion. We have with us Karthik Padmanabhan, Developer Relations Lead for Google India, and he will be sharing his insights on Android 11 and why Google is so kicked about Kotlin. Android 11 is the 11th major release and the 18th version of the Android mobile operating system. It was released in early September. Karthik is pursuing the mission of empowering the next billion users to have access to Google's open source technologies through developer and startup ecosystems in India, the Middle East, North Africa, Central and West Asia. Karthik has been in the tech industry for over two decades with companies including Microsoft and IBM. And now at Google, Karthik is proficient in product management, business development and developer relations. Karthik lives on a farm on the outskirts of Bangalore with his family and is into sustainable living practices, including growing their own food, rainwater harvesting and natural farming. Welcome Karthik and over to you. Thank you, Shilpa. Thanks for the opportunity. So, yeah, so I'm very excited about being invited to talk at the Times Techies uh, webinar. So it's a great opportunity for us to showcase on what we are uh, what we are currently releasing on Android 11. And we also want to talk a little bit on why Kotlin is, is getting very hot by the days. So let me just share the screen and uh, get into the presentation view. Yeah, so uh, so Android uh, 11 has led the way towards the future of mobile. Uh, we have a strong developer community that provides early and th thoughtful feedback, helping us del deliver a robust platform for apps and games uh, for over billion of billions of users around the world. Uh, so we also made sure 5G foldable displays on device machine learning is all incorporated in the current version of uh, Android 11. Uh, some quick overview on the timeline. Uh, so the developer preview started in Feb. Uh, we ran it till May. Uh, the beta releases happened in June, July. So massive testing happened on a global basis. Uh, we also had the community participating very, very energetically in the beta releases. And the final release, like you said, has happened just about a few weeks back. And we are excited about the prospects of how things uh, are uh, looking forward to Android 11. So first thing I want to touch upon is privacy changes. Privacy an area where we have been evolving over the last several releases of Android, and we continue to do so on Android 11. In Android 10, we introduced numerous features to help protect our users' uh, privacy. We have received tons of excellent feedback from users and app developers since then. One of our main focuses in Android 11 has been to build upon successes of Android 10 based on that feedback in permission, we have made privacy and location top level, setting menu, making it user easier for users to access the information. We made location permission more granular and added background location reminders. We made activity recognition a dangerous runtime permission and restricted access or to on-device screen content. So with the recent Android 10 introduction of granular location permission, we have seen over half of the users selecting only while the app is in use. And our data suggests that users understand the while in use option and are intentional about their choice, providing us with a strong signal that users are choosing to share less information and data with apps. So, and our data, uh, uh, so this, this trend is something which we feel is here to stay. The, uh, the data is, is, the user data is very, very pivotal and, and, and users have become very, very choosy and picky about how and when uh, they want to choose their data. We also introduced background location reminders and our data suggests higher user engagement than other Android notifications. And of users engaging with the notification over 65% are choosing to change to either, either while in use or deny. Android 10 changes paved the path for us to evolve our platform to bring even greater protection of users' data. Today, we'll talk about new enhancements in Android 11. So now I'm going to talk about one-time permission. When given a choice, users are choosing to share less private data with their apps. And we also saw that there are many apps which request background location access with no need for it. 
So we asked our users, what about other types of data are important to them? Based on the feedback in Android 11, we are bringing users more granular control over users' private data, location, camera, mic, and significantly limiting access to background location. As can be seen, users like the ideas that we restrict background access and are excited for new one-time permission. Oh, excuse me, Karthik, uh, there's a pop-up blocking your uh, presentation. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, there's a, yeah. Can you minimize? Yeah, users will be able to, able to grant temporary one-time permissions for location permission requests. Uh, so again, uh, we have put the user in front of whatever we have to design on Android 11 so that the user ha gives the access to the apps to access their private and personal information so that users really know, understand which app is using what kind of information of theirs. And now let's talk about new support for apps to discover potentially unintended access to private data. And this is a very, very hot topic because a lot of apps have access to data in an unintended way. So we need to figure out how we'll be able to stop that in a meaningful manner. A best practice for building mobile apps is to ensure transparency for accessing private data. For example, it should be clear and obvious to the user why a WAP app needs access to their contact information. Karthik, Karthik. Yeah. Can I just yeah. stop you? Uh, is it sure. possible to this this little pop up that is kind of blocking the main presentation? Uh, okay. Can you uh, put that to the side or something? Is that possible? Is it, is it fine now? Uh, now it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 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 the unexpected private data use. So so legacy code, the location, contact, microphone. So all these are are constantly looking to have access to the private data. And so we have to make sure that the legacy code and the code which has been written are limiting users from accessing this particular data, right? So, so we made sure that we're able to incorporate that into this. Oh, that pop-up is back. Oh, okay. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, now moving on to new foreground uh, services types. So here again, uh, so uh, we have the companion device, the media projection and location, and how these service types are accessing in Android 10. And, uh, and so basically making sure that all these have, have a secure way of accessing, and we are able to limit some of these access on an ongoing basis, depending on the user choices. So it enforced to ensure accountability for access. Okay, the next topic is scoped storage in Android 11. So it was introduced with Android 10. Uh, we had a collection and limited uh, access to shared storage in terms of protecting app, user data, and better attribution. So it applies to all kinds of data files, photos, videos, music, and documents and other files. So we want to make sure that we are able to bring in the distinction uh, between the normal storage as well as uh, for the data files so that people are able to have access and privacy and secure some of their data and, and, and make sure that this data is secure in a way that you don't allow access when you don't need to actually give access to people. Now, moving on to the next topic is for game developers, right? So we have, we, have, so we see this game uh, uh, development uh, category growing very, very rapidly in India. So we see, uh, especially in the last four or five months, this category has grown tremendously in India, where we see a lot of consumption of app developers creating games, and these games are being consumed by a lot of users. Uh, so with Android 11, we made sure that we bring in the right kind of uh, facilities for game developers to work in a much more scaled manner, uh, so that they're able to have uh, render these games uh, much more faster and also make sure that uh, multi-gaming uh, becomes uh, uh, much more scalable uh, for the game uh, for the gamers. So, so angle for open uh, GL uh, is the one which we are uh, currently working on. So, for all kinds of games, uh, be it Angry Birds or Clash of Clans, some of the popular ones, we are making we are making sure that we have the provision uh, to provide uh, in-depth gaming console. Uh, within the Android uh, console for them so that they're able to bring in right rendering of these games and work in a way that the game developers are using some of the enhancements in Android 11 so that they're able to build 
uh, much more robust games. So also we have radio access technology display. Uh, uh, 5G is supported on Android 11 and, uh, and we are able to close loop uh, with 5G so that people who have access uh, and want to build uh, for keeping in mind 5G as and when it gets available in India, uh, your investment is protected uh, from an Android 11 platform. Moving on to Kotlin. So we've seen a phenomenal uh, steady growth as far as uh, Kotlin language is concerned. So we see uh, modern programming language uh, uh, coming up with Kotlin a lot. So far, we've seen a steady growth of uh, people using Java as a programming language to work on Android. Uh, over the last few years, we're starting to see a lot of upliftment of programming language uh, uh, going up for Kotlin. Uh, and, and, and we've also open source Apache 2.0. So, so with this, Kotlin has got that much more stronger and, and, and become a default uh, moving towards a default programming language as far as uh, uh, Android is concerned. The Kotlin evolution started way back in 2010. Uh, the project started and uh, we worked with JetBrains who are the official uh, uh, creators of Kotlin uh, with 1.0. And uh, officially we supported during uh, uh, IO uh, 2017, we officially supported uh, uh, Kotlin language on Android. Uh, and uh, Android became the uh, Kotlin's first and then now we have the uh, Kotlin 1.4 preview, which is which is significantly made a huge enhancements compared to the Kotlin 1.2. And, and, and the reason why we uh, at Google are very bullish about Kotlin and the Kotlin adoption for Android is it's very concise, it's expressive. Uh, it is uh, for people who have worked on Java, for them to move on to Kotlin is very, very simple and very easy. Uh, it, is, it becomes very easily interoperable with uh, Java. So the other key benefit is the code safety. Uh, we have a lot more tools which are friendly. Uh, and, and, and it's number four in terms of the most loud language on, on, on Stack Overflow, right? So, so we see a lot of adoption, a lot of uptake uh, for people to use Kotlin to build apps uh, on the Android platform. And this graph very clearly shows uh, how uh, we've been seeing a significant growth uh, on the Kotlin adoption. Uh, so we see uh, over the last uh, four to five years, uh, ever since the uh, launch of uh, Kotlin 1.0, we've seen a significant ramp up. And, and if you see over the last couple of years, we've almost doubled the number of uh, user base or the developers use adopting Kotlin uh, for working on Android. So we feel that uh, this, is, uh, this is the present as well as the future for people to work on Android to build uh, classy applications. So some of the tools uh, friendly are, uh, we have IntelliJ uh, IDEA, uh, it comes with a community edition and uh, that's something which we see a lot of people getting to use. We also have the Android Studio bundled uh, with Android Studio, Eclipse, uh, install plugins and the standalone compiler. All these are uh, Kotlin works on the backend integrates to all this. So we are, we'll be able to get people to work on all these uh, tools. Uh, in a much more friendlier way than uh, than probably if they're probably using the traditional Java. So we're able to build applications for multi-platform. So Kotlin JVM for Android. Uh, so we have uh, for the Kotlin for JavaScript browsers. Uh, we have the server edition. And then we also have the iOS embedded system, the uh, Kotlin for native uh, uh, iOS embedded system. So let's talk about uh, Kotlin for Android. And that's where, uh, uh, I wanted to share some more details. The expressiveness in terms of the data classes, scope functions, property access syntax is very, very high on Kotlin for Android. Uh, we have big uh, nullability baked into the system uh, so that uh, people who are wanting to work uh, from a safety perspective of the apps have got this incorporated into it. We also have the interoperability, 100% interoperability with Java programming language. So if you're building for uh, building on Java and if you want it to get portable on Kotlin, it, it has an interoperability. So you don't have to really worry too much about that. And we also have the structured concurrency, uh, an ASIC operation in a scope, avoid leaking work and memory. So, so we've taken care of uh, your investment is protected if you're migrating from Java onto Kotlin. So that's something you don't need to be worried as a developer. Okay, Kotlin is production ready for your Android app development. Uh, so we have the Android Studio, which provides a first class support for Kotlin. 
uh, it, it has built in tools for you to help and java based code uh, so and android ktx makes android development with kotlin much more con concise and kotlin uh, uh, friendly sdk is uh, contains nullability annotations to help uh, help avoid null pointer exceptions this is a very important feature which is got incorporated in the uh, sdk of uh, uh, kotlin and we have a bunch of uh, learning resources very simple language very easy to learn especially if you are proficient with java for you to pick up kotlin is not that very difficult at all okay there's bunch of resources out there you have the kotlin bootcamp course uh, you have fundamental courses uh, you have the advanced android and kotlin course you have a lot of courses on udacity kotlin bootcamp for programmers developing android apps with kotlin so these are some of the bunch of resources we have out there a uh, so lot of helpful links kotlin language uh, kotlin java interoperability guide uh, you can add kotlin to an existing app migrating an android uh, project to kotlin kotlin core routines so these are some of the links which is there which you want to make a note of if you're mo moving into kotlin so uh, just as a wrap up uh, what we uh, basically talked about in the last uh, uh, 15 minutes is about android 11 so android 11 is uh, very very uh, focused on making sure that your data uh, integrity is very high uh, from a user perspective so as an app developer if you're using the android 11 platform some of the concerns which we see increasingly the trend we have seen is that people are getting very very uh, privacy conscious people want to make sure that the data is not misused uh, so if you're an app builder and and if you want to really see the adoption of your apps uh, you need to look at android 11 platform because it comes with bunch of privacy uh, features uh, which is what the users are right now looking at uh, on a global basis as well as in india uh, second in terms of interoperability with uh, the earlier versions especially from app migration is that much more easier Uh, so you can very very easily move on to that and we also want to make sure that your data security Uh, in terms of uh, making sure that uh, people uh, the apps are able to access the data in a way that it's much more meaningful and you have full control on the data before any apps have access to that data is with the user so that's a very very important aspect and then finally uh, uh, for game developers uh, if you're uh, if you're developing mobile phone games uh, there's bunch of new features and enhancements that's got incorporated into android 11 that helps the gaming experience and then the robustness of your games on the android platform uh, go up significantly Uh, and then finally if you if you are an app developer using android platform uh, you need to give us uh, kotlin a serious look one it's the fastest growing uh, it's the fourth fastest growing programming language on stack overflow uh, we've already reached 4 million users uh, from developers using it we recently concluded an android uh, uh, kotlin study jam which is hugely successful uh, we see a lot of uh, growth in the kotlin user group uh, globally as well as in india so that's a language uh, which uh, more and more people are preferring and choosing to work with android on so with that uh, i am open for questions uh, any thoughts comments there's not much change in the, uh, the ui itself that will remain more or less the same yeah so uh, so the ui uh, uh, is is absolutely no change in fact i'm using the android 11 uh, so there's uh, from a user perspective nothing changes uh, uh, it's only on the background a lot of changes has happened uh, uh, from a privacy and data uh, data interoperability and data security perspective for the user interface absolutely remains the same okay uh kartik can you turn off the sc uh, screen share yeah okay thanks a lot um, great uh i think for our uh, viewers uh, the chat box is open so who wants to ask questions please do shilpa and i'll uh, put those questions to kartik uh yeah i, I mean big focus on data uh, privacy and security i mean it, it, Uh, Indians also are they also equally conscious about privacy and data security or uh, less? Yeah, I think uh, in in fact, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, focus right now is ever since uh, there's a lot of attention based on certain announcements made by uh, Ministry of Information Technology. Uh, on banning of certain apps and things like that. So the, what has happened is that user awareness 
of uh, data privacy and security has has become uh, paramount and uh, and so initially probably we would have probably kept india out of the scheme of things but off late in, in the last four or five months in uh, the events leading up to a lot of things has got user very interested and very curious to understand uh, uh, more about their data and understanding how the data gets used and also mo uh, most of these platforms are global in nature right so android 11 uh, it's just not about uh, uh, an user in one particular territory because it's an inter interconnected world and interoperable world. Uh, so you can't ring fence it to one geography. It has to be uh, done on a global scale because end of the day, information flow has to happen that way. So. Okay, okay. Uh, just for my interest, I mean, uh, Indian developers, uh, I mean, you see them uh, everywhere. You, um, uh okay kotlin familiarity how how strong are they with kotlin, uh, kotlin i mean in kotlin right now how yeah, so the english java to kotlin already what proportion you think yeah so uh, uh so based on uh, so i think like like i said uh, moving from java to kotlin is very very easy very uh, easy it's, uh, it's a it's a uh, if you for you to work on kotlin you need to know java so otherwise, uh, oh, okay. the yeah, Java so, machine, uh, virtual machine, and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to. Uh, so, and if you know Java, Kotlin becomes much more easier. Uh, so the codes become much more easier to write. So you have to know Java, better. is it? You have to know yeah, Java. So you need to know some programming language, right? So if you know Java, it's easier for you to learn Kotlin. Okay, okay. But but is it possible to jump straight into Kotlin? Without yeah, of course. You can jump into any language. Absolutely. For all the newcomers, instead of learning Java, they might straight away uh, go to uh, Kotlin. But okay. since uh, Java is taught at a very uh, curriculum level at the schools uh, and, and yeah. very early in engineering college, oh, exactly. there's a very high probability that people will know Java. Oh, okay. uh, but even now, uh, we're starting to see uh, very early signs of people wanting to, uh, faculties and colleges wanting to understand Kotlin because, uh, because there's a lot of uh, job opportunities are coming up. Like if you see a lot of people uh, who are building some of these uh, cool high-end mobile apps are asking for people with Kotlin skills. Okay. Uh, and so that could probably make a lot of uh, uh, colleges pr probably introduce very uh, Kotlin very early on in their curriculum because okay. it kind of, uh, it goes very well with Java, right? So so it, it becomes an enhancement for that. That's primarily for mobile app development, is it? Or yeah, this is primarily things? for mobile app development, so that you're able to uh, write native apps very quickly, very fast, uh, and and it has to be because mobile. The reason why Kotlin is preferred is that you're able. To, it's like a language, right? So, if Java is a language where for you to communicate the same thing, it takes much more words. This the whole thing can be condensed a lot. Uh, in in Kotlin, so it becomes much more sharper, so that you can you can you can get done more lines of codes uh, with uh, with lesser number of uh, lines uh, compared to Java, so that it becomes compact, the bugs are less, error rates are less. Uh, so that's essentially what it is. Okay. Uh, okay. So that now with uh, mobile phones being the vehicle for most of the applications, right? So uh, so people are get, getting more and more. Uh, clear about why they need to use a Kotlin so that their app becomes much more tighter, sharper, and uh, and much more friendlier. So that's the reason why it is starting to grow a lot. Okay, okay. Shilpa? Yeah, we have questions from our audience. Uh, the first one is from J Jatin Bhateja. How does Kotlin perform over x86 versus ARM? Does it use stock JVM? Yeah, so it, 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 it does use that. So, uh, so, uh, so we've not uh, really uh, tested it that way. And uh, so probably I need to check much more details on that and come back with some specifics. But yeah, broadly it does. Okay, this is a question from Srinath Gopalakrishna. Um, and you mentioned some learning resources. Uh, he's asking, uh, what are the free learning resources for Kotlin available online? The ones that you mentioned, were they free? Or you mentioned some. Yeah, right? all, this is, yeah, all, all this is uh, free available. The, uh, so all the links which I shared, so if you uh -huh. can just share that, they're all uh, free uh, courses. All are free. All there are courses on Udacity, which is, uh, which is priced. Okay. Uh, but a lot of other links which are shared is all uh, free uh, free courses. These free ones are good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be good enough. Yeah. Okay, okay. Shilpa. 
Yeah, we have the next question from Samshwi. What about OS interoperability for the end cons uh, consumer? Does Android support data transfer if I want to switch from iOS device to an Android device? No, so you have, a, uh, for that, you have to, if you're building an app in native iOS, uh, you can't immediately port it onto Android. So it doesn't work that way. So even though Kotlin uh, has a provision like a shared, you can you can use Kotlin to build apps in iOS too, or you can use uh, use Kotlin to build a JavaScript of a website. Uh, but if you need to, uh, so so today as an app builder, you you if you choose to do the native, so you have to build an I/O, you have to maintain an iOS version and you have to maintain a, an Android version. Uh, but uh, if you're using Flutter, which is uh, where you can use uh, uh, Flutter as the programming language, uh, which Google supports and it's a Google product, and then you can port the app onto uh, an iOS or an Android. Uh, but sometimes a lot of people prefer doing the native way because if your app involves a lot of intricacies of using a lot of capabilities of a particular smartphone, uh, and then probably you would want to choose the native. So short answer is you can't straight away an Android app fit into iOS or an iOS app fit into Android. It doesn't have work that way. You have to build it grounds up unless until uh, using Flutter, uh, which uh, then you can use the same code base which compiles in iOS as well as Android. Android also, is there a lot of nati native development that happens? Yeah. So native development uh, for Android, uh, we like initially it used to happen a lot in Java. So now uh, people are moving to Kotlin. Okay. Okay. As a programming language to develop using the Android Studio. So those are used typically when? I mean, when you said intricacies, what exactly? Uh, so uh, intricacies of what? Uh, in, in what context, uh, Sujit? No, you mentioned um, to use native uh, and while we, we ah, so, so suppose uh, if you uh, like you're, there are a lot of hardware features of your phone, right? So if you want to use the camera to an extent, if you want to use the mic, uh, if you want to use the GPS location uh, and all these small, small, minute things, if you want to program and use it in a, in a much more definitive way, then probably you, uh, doing native programming makes better. But if you're using an app which doesn't use any of those intricacies of these hardware features that very much, uh, and then probably using uh, using something like a Flutter, uh, okay. which works on both the platform, it works fine. So it all depends on the architecture of your app, and uh, and so and uh, so that's and the, and and also the number of what kind of experience you want to give the users. So then you choose that. So uh, so we see. Uh, people who are building apps, which is uh, which is kind of uh, used uh, uh, by a lot of people, a uh, lot of users uh, uh, in both Android and and uh, iOS kind of a platform, uh, end up uh, doing uh, native. But if it's very limited and if they don't want to have the hassles of maintaining two code bases, they they use Flutter to develop their applications, uh, which works both on iOS as well as Android. Okay. Okay. Give an idea of the game development environment in India right now. I mean, is there a lot of lot happening, or is it still low? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I think uh, the current situation in India over the last four five months is kind of uh, uh, given a lot of hopes for the gaming developers in India. Uh, so we see a lot of uh, gaming developers uh, trying out new games, coming out with a uh, lot of. Uh, gaming applications. Some of them are uh, getting wildly successful. Some of them are not even making the cut. Uh, uh, but uh, but what we see is that uh, we increasingly trying to see a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm and interest uh, for gaming as a platform, right? So initially, we, we had uh, not only a few games, Indian, Indian uh, developed games were there on the Android platform. Now, if you s start to look at the play, uh, you, st you see a significant growth of new uh, uh, Indian apps uh, with games, Indian gaming apps are coming up. And so we realized that uh, uh, maybe uh, it's a change in the user trend. So we see a lot of users adopting uh, to play mobile games. We probably see an uh, uh, increasing trend of users spending time uh, playing games. Uh, and, and so that could be a catalyst for a lot of gaming developers wanting to build uh, mobile games. And, uh, and with this new edition of Android 11, we've made sure that the platform is robust for gaming developers to use uh, this platform. 
Did the pandemic change things when people are sitting at home? I mean, yeah, I guess so. I think uh, uh, internet usage as such has gone up uh, during mm -hmm. the pandemic. So not mm -hmm. only the video consumption, I think the gaming consumption, the internet usage has gone up. So okay. uh, I, I would say that uh, it could be that could be a, a, a pivotal case. But we, uh, so I think. Also, the know-how about uh, uh, the game development has also gone up, right? So gaming is slightly different from uh, technology, right? Gaming is all about understanding. It's like a it's like a movie production, right? You need to write a script, you need to create a character, you need to have a story, and then you need to translate that into a technology, right? It's just not building an app. Uh, so and some okay. of them flop, and some of them become a hit, and then you have to come with versions. I think. I think what has happened is that we also see a lot of maturity of the gaming developers happening in India. So we have a lot of game designers coming up. Uh, so a lot of game designers de designing games, and then the developers translate the game design into a game, and for which you need technology. And you also have a multiplayer scenario hosting has also gone up with a lot of public uh, cloud providers available now with the data centers in India. Uh, so you also because if your certain games have to have uh, the latency has to be short and then you have to be okay. able to give a good experience on the mobile uh, phone, right? Okay. Uh, because it's some of them are multiplayer too, uh, and so uh, and so then you'd be should be able to. So the backend technology infrastructure is also matured and it's become robust. So all this is uh, made a one is you have a lot of game designers coming up with a lot of original thoughts and ideas, uh, which is capturing the imagination of Indian users. A lot of uh, Android developers also building a lot of skills uh, uh, for translating these ideas into apps, and then the backend infrastructure and technology uh, to host these games okay. in a multiplayer scenario has also become much more robust now. So, uh, okay. so that the latency comes up and the game experience goes up. So all this has come to a uh, this thing that we see a lot of uptake on gaming in India. Interesting. Do you see any particular preference for? Um... Indian Indianized storylines, characters, and all. Yeah, so I think uh, I think what has happened is that uh, we see a lot of a uh, uh, um, lot of Indian theme oriented games uh, which is coming. Uh, so we already have a uh, lot of these traditional Indian games being translated into uh, apps. Uh, of course, uh, cricket is a big thing, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of cricket based apps, uh, gaming apps are already there. Uh, so we also uh, we also see uh, uh, increase uh, in uh, in traditional uh, mythological kind of games uh, also going up uh, there, uh, but it's still we seeing a lot of breadth of gaming happening in India, but we still not had some new winners. I think over okay. time probably will come, but I think the pipeline of number of uh, groundswell of more apps, gaming apps coming from India is going going up tremendously. Which is the one yeah. that has. Done very well. Any particular one you can. Think I, I'm not. I'm not able to recollect the names because it's a very big list. Uh, okay. But uh, but I can tell you that the significant pipeline of new games, uh, maybe in the last five to six months, has gone up. Uh, but like I said, there's nothing which has come out as a clear winner. So for me okay. to say a particular name out there, but, I, but these takes time to mature, right? So it takes time for these games to mature and the users uh, users to go up. But I think. Uh, the kind of environment is very ripe uh, for Indian game developers to build Indian games so that Indian users are able to uh, have a greater experience on that. I think uh, I think it's come. It's around that time it is happening now. Shilpa, uh, Karthik, uh, can you share some details about the Google developer ecosystem in India and how it's grown over the years? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, so we have uh, uh, the Google uh, Developer Group uh, has uh, has been operational in India since uh, 2010, 2011. Uh, so right now we are uh, close to around 200,000 uh, members, uh, and we have uh, chapters in uh, 50 cities, uh, and uh, and we have around uh, 58 chapters uh, in India. Uh, so on an average, there's a meetup happening every month. And they're talking on topics like uh, Android or Kotlin, machine learning, TensorFlow, cloud, uh, Flutter, any topic uh, they, they talk about and discuss. We also have uh, uh, developer student clubs spread across 250 uh, colleges in India. Uh, we also have uh, 12 cities uh, in India as TensorFlow user group, uh, which has around 30,000 members. 
And then we also have the Google Cloud available in nine cities, which has around close to around 25, 30,000 uh, members. So these are all uh, communities which are uh, uh, not directly managed by Google. Uh, so they are basically community led uh, uh, where you have an organizer who sets up a Google developer group and then uh, he or she uh, galvanizes the local community, gets members and they set up uh, meetups and they discuss any tech topic. And not only tech topic, now times like this, people are uh, talking about interview skills, people are talking about startup, uh, depending on uh, what is the need. So the, it's basically to help the community, help the techies uh, to share and learn, uh, not just technology, a lot of other things that come to them. Uh, so so we're also doing an annual event, which comes once a year called the Google Dev Fest, which is led by the community. The Dev Fest uh, season is going to start in October 16th, 17th, and uh, 18th, uh, where uh, we'll have online events uh, by these communities, basically celebrating technology, having talks, and, and sharing and learning all these uh, great stuff on what they have been doing. So, so that's uh, likely to happen. Uh, so yeah, so, so so the whole community is, uh, most of the Google technology is open source like Android, machine learning, web. Uh, so, uh, so these communities are uh, basically having uh, meetups and, and, and technology talks around these new technologies. Just to give you an example, uh, in the last, uh, as a run-up to the Android 11 uh, launch, we had uh, community talks by around 30 communities in India, where they invited a lot of uh, uh, members to have a deep type talk on Android 11. And so, so we had a lot of these mobile app developers who want to know what are the latest features and and, and things like that. They can always get it on on a, on the YouTube or get it out there on the internet. But then they also want to listen to somebody and ask some questions, clarify, and also uh, kind of make new uh, friends uh, so that they're able to keep in touch when they are basically getting stuck on some particular technology aspect. So that way, this technology helps, uh, this community helps people to keep in touch and share and learn from each other. I also had more questions on this developer ecosystem, but uh, there are multiple questions coming in. Um, one is from uh, Rahul Rao asking can you please give examples of any popular indian android apps which have moved to kotlin okay most of the i can't name uh, uh, because i don't think i have a uh, uh, i can use the name i don't have the permission but if you see most of the uh, uh, the popular apps uh, beat uh, uh, beat the food delivery apps and things like that uh, have already uh, moved to uh, uh, Kotlin. So if you see the top, uh, uh, they're using Kotlin to basically build their apps. So when somebody moves what, you can move it little by little. Uh, how, how does it happen? I mean, you, you, don't, you don't change the entire code, I guess, do you? Yeah, so you have to migrate. There's a tips and tricks for you to migrate your code base from Java to Kotlin. Mm -hmm. So there's links which I've provided. So you have to just migrate. So. And then once you migrate, you need to basically come up with some fixes to those codes. Some uh -huh. some codes will pop up, and then you need to rewrite that code. Okay. Uh, so some routines you don't need to do it. You can use the same routines, but somewhere you need to rewrite the codes. So these migration tools are provided by somebody. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, it's available on there. It's available online, so you could use. Them. Okay. How much time does it take to move? Let's say one of these depends on the apps. number of code lines, right? So it, it changes from uh, uh, code to code. So it it's finally a function of how how many lines of codes you have and complexities what you have. So that's the pros and cons people take, right? So so there are certain enhancements which could see end of the day you're focused on the user, right? So you want to enhance the user experience. And if you're if you feel that your user experience by using Kotlin will go up, then you'll take the pains to migrate okay. but you feel that it's just okay. marginal and they don't want to go through that thing you okay. see it in java in java remaining in java is not bad at all <laughs> it's uh, it's it's pretty okay uh, uh -huh. but if you feel that hey uh, i'm not able to get this experience and if uh, if i probably use kotlin i'll able to get that experience then you'll make that shift okay okay but are there things that java still does better than kotlin so Java is very sturdy. It's been there for many years, so it's rock solid. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, it still powers uh, the maximum number of Android apps. So yeah. So, uh, but if you are looking at certain functionalities and and new way of rendering information, uh, and then for you eventually over a period of time, right? For you to reduce, increase your developer productivity and reduce your code base, 
and make sure that the code becomes much more definitive then as a chief technology officer you'll take the call that hey i will move to kotlin there was a similar so, question so basically under the day a business call so but okay. but if you look at the trend right now if you look at the job opportunities and the trends out there you see a lot more people asking for kotlin as a skill okay. than as java okay. so that very clearly shows that there are a lot of people out there thinking about uh, deploying kotlin are there uh, for their existing apps so that's 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 exactly what it says and if you look at the adoption of kotlin from from almost 2 million to 4 million in span of one and a half years it's grown it's almost double Uh, uh -huh. the number of developers using so obviously they seeing some uh, enhancements in terms of uh, quicker turnaround code shorter code base all that is trying to give them the fill up what's this number for india you think In, we can't get that unfortunately we can't get it so so yeah. it's very difficult because the stack overflow gives the global data right oh, so it's yeah. not particular for anything but india is the so india plays a big role right i think the developer population in india is second biggest after us mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. i'm sure that india will play a significant role into that and portion of that yeah. but if anybody is starting a new app altogether you would recommend going straight to kotlin yes i would recommend them uh, to go to kotlin because i think a uh, future uh, maintenance of the code base uh, the ease of use of uh, the application all that becomes this thing uh, uh, it becomes much much more easier with kotlin than probably uh, using okay. uh, I had a similar question on games as well any games developed on kotlin it's a question from pratik <laughs> i am not able that's a great question i'm not able to think of anything right now but uh, i'll probably ping you guys an answer if i'm able to find one but yeah okay okay elpa yeah this question is from dheeraj can kotlin be used for server side development for the android app absolutely yeah. so the server side uh, i also showed in my uh, presentation yes uh, kotlin can be used uh, for the server side uh, kotlin can be used on the server side it can be used for the web uh, website it can also be used for android app and it can also be used on the ios so you yeah so you have the plugins for you for you to use it on the server side and do you see people doing that yeah we have uh, we've seen that uh, because especially now with this interoperability and able to uh, Uh, talk to multiple applications because uh, your mobile app is end of the day talking to a lot of enterprise applications on the back end uh, so people are having to starting to use kotlin to make sure that the interconnection and and the data interchange happens between your back end applications and the front end and so we see a very clear opportunity for kotlin uh, on the server side to make okay. a role uh we uh, because it is logical right so it is logical for people to start using the using kotlin as a front end to start using on the server side also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have this question from ibrahim um, i'm sure the answer is yes uh, does kotlin support ai and ml features uh, no so kotlin is a programming language so uh, it is uh, i mean like uh, you have to for you to bring in the ai and ml features right so you have to you have to bring in the ml kit which is available as part of android uh, for your app to become much more intuitive and smart uh, so 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 kotlin is is nothing but uh, uh, an enhanced version of java the way you build an application so you build an applications for you, for you to bring in uh, machine learning and ai you need to either use tensorflow which is an open source uh, library uh, to basically train the library to come up with the right kind of uh, prediction which you're looking for could be used yeah you can use ml and ai kit in conjunction with the kotlin app but kotlin by itself is not uh, is not a substitute for ai and machine learning So this question is from Kavita Challa. What aspects of the device security is improved in Android 11 compared to the previous version? So uh, most of the device level, it's 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 all about the data uh, and the user privacy. So security, we have not done anything much on this uh, pure hardware level security. It's all about the data uh, privacy, data protection. uh for the users right so if the user wants to make sure that the certain portion of the profile uh, the profile information or personal data is not accessed by an app uh, knowingly or unknowingly that gets protected okay 
What, what, what's your responsibility? I mean, do you have to grow the developer ecosystem for Google in India? Or what's your responsibility? So uh, my responsibility is to drive adoption uh, of uh, 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 Google technologies uh, so that we are able to build more robust apps for the real Indian users. So we, are, uh, we feel that uh, uh, India has maturity of developers building for the top end of the pyramid okay but uh, but for the uh, for the india 3.0 or for the users who are not english language literate mm -hmm. who are indian language literate some of them are not even literate how do you how do you build apps for them and make sure that they they get the benefit of the smartphone okay 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 so so that is that is our true responsibility so how so do we channelize you sorry What's the challenge? What are the big challenges there? Here, yeah, the cha challenge is that how do we get uh, uh, developers to design apps which are much more appropriate, uh, which is for Indian, Indian, which has Indic language, which has voice capability. Like, how does your how does your app recognize uh, uh, instead of using a command using fingers? How do we how do we talk to your app in your local Indian language and still get the app to do what you expect it to do? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that uh, yeah, so be it in healthcare, be it in education, be it in government information, uh, how people are using a three thousand rupees, four thousand rupees smartphone, uh, uh, at the masses are able to use uh, all these applications in a much more intuitive way, and how do we get the Indian developers to build for the next billion users, right? So that's exactly the point, right? So we already got the top end who are probably already using a smartphone. Their life is totally reliant on the smartphone for them to make sure that their day is productive, both for their uh, information, entertainment, and all that. Similarly, extrapolate this to a, uh, uh, to a very average user uh, who has probably got onto the internet in the last one year or two years. Uh, his first exposure to the internet is in the last one year or two years, right? Uh, and 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 not necessary. So that also includes the young people, right? So for children, how do you bring in privacy so that they are not uh, mis uh, misused by various apps? And similarly for elders who have gone onto the internet in the last one or two years, uh, how how are they able to? And who probably are not English language literate, uh, who only know Indian languages, and some of them don't even know to read or write. So how do they still use the app? Uh, still use various apps so that's the biggest challenge which we are right now grappling with so how what kind of, how are you helping them in terms of, i mean in um... so we are working through the developers we are doing a lot of workshops uh, of enhancing uh, using a lot of uh, voice enabled features on the uh, google platform like the office assistant uh, google assistant uh, feature which is uh, which you can uh, which you can talk to on the phone uh, so uh, we are also conducting a lot of, uh, we just did a build for digital India uh, project along with uh, Ministry of Information Technology, where we got some 10,000 applications uh, from various uh, people who are building real Indian applications for uh, providing clean water, for safety, security, uh, clean tech. Uh, agriculture, agri-tech and all that. And then we, uh, out of that, we shortlisted 100, uh, 100 applications and then we mentored 60, 70 of them. And 60 out of the 60, 70 of them, we showcased 30 apps, uh, which, are, uh, which are now being uh, scaled in a much more innovative way. Uh, so we are, uh, we are help and so these all uh, solving real Indian problems, not at the top of the pyramid, like uh, at a rural level, at a taluk level, at a uh, at a village level, right? So, uh, so we are looking for uh, developers or building apps uh, which are solving the real India problems at a large scale. At a, so what is your sense of their ability to monetize these things, these uh, at these levels? So right now, uh, most of this is through in-app advertisements. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the way it's in the top of the pyramid is also it's th it's mostly through in-app advertisements if it's content-based, but if it's service-based, they always get paid for a service, right? So it's it's end of the day it's the business model what you build on. So the app mm -hmm. app is just a enabler for you to reach your product or services to the particular user. Mm -hmm. uh, so even on the content side, we see a lot more uh, success stories happening on the Indian language content. Uh, so we see uh, uh, people uh, uh, like we had Share Chat, who have uh, who have probably been part of the Google uh, uh, Launchpad Accelerator. 
uh, four five years back, and now actually uh, one of the very popular local content, Indian content, indie content uh, out there. Then we also have Vocal, which is another startup which has been part of the Google Launchpad, uh, uh, build a lot of indie indie content. So slowly we're seeing a lot of in intake and interest uh, for Indian language content, uh, uh, both uh, uh, textual content as well as uh, uh, video content out there. And then we also see a lot of these uh, uh, apps and services which are solving uh, problems for the last mile connectivity where, uh, where the users are not probably English language proficient. They need to have access to local Indian languages. And some of them will not be able to type in commands and all that. And they should, at best, they can talk to a phone. So we, we're starting to see uh, that kind of uptake slowly happening. But my job, since you asked this for me, is to how do I accelerate it? So how do I move uh, technology workshops? How do I get more developers? And, and some of the challenges which we continue to have, like you raised, is how do I monetize this, right? So it is like chicken and egg, right? So you will not have these people motivated to build if it's not monetized. So that's where that those are the challenges which we deal with. But I think uh, Google has taken a lead uh, in some of those areas. Like we ourselves are building a lot of products like Google Pay, for instance, is reached the last mile. And so we understand how the users react, how the users are uh, uh, engaging. A lot of our searches, like Google search, I think 25% of the searches are now in Indian languages. Okay. So a few years back, it was one or two person in Indian languages. Right? How many years ago? A few years back. I don't know. I don't know exact uh, data, but I think Garov will probably be able to give you. But uh, so, so I'm just giving an example. A few years back, hardly anybody was using uh, searches in Indian language. Okay. So I think... And all this experience is what we want to share with app builders, right? So that we understand what users, how, how these things resonate. Uh, but in a short, our job is to make sure that the the smartphone experience the and for people who are using Android uh, at, at a 3,000 rupees phone or a 50,000 rupees phone or a 60,000 rupees phone is democratized. Like everybody has a good experience and they feel good about it. And whatever needs they have for their information, right? gets language should not be a barrier inability to read or write should not be a barrier but still they should be able to use the smartphone to get that stuff that's the challenge and we need to deliver it through the developer ecosystem which we have and so that's why we need to do more of these talks and seminars and, and figure out how we can take that you think the upper segment is saturated upper segment is not saturated unless something some disruption happens disruption happens Okay. Otherwise, another me too will not help. Will not work. It has to be a completely new ex app, yeah. some new experience. Yeah. Okay. Some, so, so another me too on anything, any category, right? Another me too will just not. Uh, just not work. Another not, food app. Not, one another one. So some disruption in a business model, which will translate into an app, uh, is what it is. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, a lot of people are working on that, uh, uh, how to use machine learning, artificial intelligence to make your app more smart, more intuitive, okay. uh, more predictive, so that you're able to disrupt uh, things. Okay. Uh, so you see that category happening out there, uh, uh, but uh, like I said, uh, only disruption can make it more relevant than, than just coming out with another another app in mm -hmm. that category. But, uh, the, the, but the new users, like I said, the, the new users, right? As we speak, we'll be adding so many more millions of users onto the internet who are, who are buying the smartphone for the first time, who are having the first smartphone experience. And they're all not uh, people who are English language literate, right? So they're all people who are probably Indian language literate. And, and how, do we, how do we increase the smartphone experience for them is, is the biggest challenge uh, at this point in time uh, we are grappling with. Quick one from this, uh, there's a question from Jayant Kumar. Uh, you kind of answered it earlier, but still uh, there's something more you can add. Are there tools to convert Java code to Kotlin code? Yeah, there's, uh, there's, uh, there is a migration uh, tool, uh, but like I said, it's not like on and switch on and switch off. Uh, so you have to go through a few steps on that. Uh, and uh, so I sure I can share that link uh, again, or we can make this presentation available. So like, go through the it's not a Google thing. It's not, it's not a, a third party. It's not a Google. Okay. Well, Kotlin is not Google. We just support Kotlin. It's yes. from JetBrains. Ah, true. Yeah. Shilpa? Yeah, this question is from Rahul Bedi. Are there official Kotlin communities and events? Yeah, yeah. There are Kotlin user groups. You just Google Kotlin user group. There's one uh, in most of the big cities. Uh, now it's all anyway virtual. So so you can join any of the user groups. They have regular meetups. Uh, you can join those meetups. 
There are a lot of self-help groups. Uh, we also, uh, we just did a 30 days of Kotlin uh, some time back, and then we'll probably do another 30 days of Kotlin. Where we, in 30 days, we take them through an experience of probably building their own app using Kotlin. So they just have to log in to that and then go through various modules and then probably come up with an app and they get rewarded uh, with some swags for that. So we ran that campaign uh, uh, just a, a month back. We just concluded it. We, we had some 14,000 people submit an app uh, using Kotlin. Uh, so we feel that uh, going forward, we'll probably, based on that, we'll try to come up and do something, uh, another program, so that we're able to get more people to uh, use Kotlin and build an app and kind of submit that to us. There's this other question from Adi Sheshan. Is exception handling better in Kotlin than in Java? Yeah, so uh, so it has a lot more uh, capabilities and functionalities to do that uh, better. Uh, and uh, so so for you to get more in-depth uh, technical on that, uh, I'll, I'll prescribe a lot of talks and a lot of seminars online where you can get into the more specifics on it. But a short answer is yes. Okay, getting, uh, is there any other language that's coming up at all uh, that you are supporting or anything for, on, for Android? Uh, so right now, uh, uh, so Kotlin is the one which we are supporting. Of course, uh, we, we continue to uh, go all, out, all in with Java because mm -hmm. that's something uh, which has been with Android through its entire journey. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, other than these two, we also have Flutter, which is, uh, which is again, which you can uh, build apps using Flutter and you basically uh, transport that into a, either a, compile it into a Java code and use it on Android or you make it uh, work on iOS. Uh, so other, these are the two things, like it offers interoperability. You don't need to build an app in iOS native and then, and then build an app in Android native. So it helps you with the interoperability. But yeah, Kotlin has has been the, uh, the focus for the last three four years at least globally and and in India too. Okay, okay. How, how do Indian app developers compare with the ones in the Valley and all the Silicon Valley? Okay, so you should. Uh, it's a great question. So from a mobile app development, I remember uh, seeing a Stack Overflow uh, report, 2018, a Stack Overflow report, which called out specifically Bangalore as a hot spot one of the hotspots for Android uh, development. So I think uh, we are probably, I think I personally feel based on that report and my interactions with various Android app developers, I think Bangalore is, 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 is probably uh, out there globally as, as the number one or number two destination for Android app development. Yeah. And uh, if you also see, you, you can't get an Android engineer uh, four years, five years experience Android engineer easily. Okay. It's always in demand. So okay. either a, a startup takes them up or a, one of these multinational companies which are developing products here picks them up or one of these uh, a Fortune 500 companies which has a technology center here picks them up. Uh, so yeah, it's a, a Bangalore is the hot spot as far as Android development is concerned. In terms uh, of quality as well? In terms of quality of the apps as well? Yeah, because, uh, because the apps which we build here are all global standard, right? So you look at the okay. top Look at the Flipkart app, built in India by Android engineers. Okay. And you see the number of users there. It's nothing okay. less, right? You look at a Swiggy app. You look at a, uh, uh, I mean, Book My Show app. You look at everything. In terms of sheer numbers, it's out there uh, on a global basis. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, so the Android engineers here, I have to do something of world-class quality so that uh, yeah. uh, it sticks out. And that's why Bangalore... Uh, Android community is the hotspot. We have the BLR Droid, Bangalore Droid community, which is one of the top communities in terms of qualitative aspects of uh, Android development here. I see, I see. Yeah. And this got called, uh, uh, called specifically called out in the 2018 Stack Overflow report, the global oh, really? report. The BLR Droid. Uh, yeah. yeah. BLR Droid and Android activity in Bangalore is one of the, oh. one of the top globally. Okay, okay. Shilpa, I have a question here from Sharad Chandra. Um, I've been reading that development speed is much faster in Kotlin when compared to Java. Do you have any data on this as to how much faster Kotlin development is? Yeah, it's, uh, 
the short answer it's faster but uh, mm-hmm. but to be a specific number it depends like you know how it is the doctor says like it depends on what uh, what data structures you have how many lines of code and all that uh-huh. but uh, see it depends on uh, purely it's a function it could be somewhere as low as 10% it could be as high as 30 40% but it depends on uh, the architecture of your program uh, and the subroutines and things like that so you can't give a straight answer to it but it's definitely faster and that's the reason why people are migrating to it uh, uh, because things are just faster for you to ramp up and your productivity goes up significantly okay okay shilpa uh, kartik i had this question from my side uh, the kotlin language team is working on a multi platform project uh, where kotlin can be used for ios development how far has that progressed is it still in the development phase yeah so uh, it's still in the development phase it's still not uh, uh, come up yet uh, but i think uh, they should be working on it in a way that we should be able to come up very quickly but i still don't have clarity on that ashish okay. okay also you know if you looked at uh, you do a random search on linkedin the number of jobs for kotlin developers uh, is much higher than swift so if you can talk about how kotlin has emerged to be a hot skill yeah that's very obvious right because you look at android as a platform in india is is much bigger than ios uh, and uh, and so obviously uh, swift uh, is a platform which is which is more global i think probably western europe and america focused uh, but if you look at apps for india and the emerging market focused it would be android and uh, and so kotlin is a preferred uh, uh, programming language at least it's becoming the preferred programming language uh, superseding uh, java uh, so from that perspective i think uh, uh, it will we'll see like i said no there's, there's a lot more job opportunities for youngsters to adopt kotlin uh, and uh, and that's the skill which most of these uh, employers are looking at uh, and and they are looking like i said this quality android engineer will always be in demand in bangalore uh because anybody who wants to anywhere in the world wants to build a global android app they're looking for talent from india and 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 so this talent can work for any app anywhere right so it doesn't matter in today's context where they're based uh the reason why uh, it is very uh, they're looking for talent and bangalore plays a significant role is because of this long, strong local community so historically for the over the over a decade ever since blr droid has been formed uh, and other communities are formed they've been working on android so they really understand from the earlier versions of android uh, java android studio uh, so they uh, so and that community is kind of able to nurture newcomers uh, some of these people have become senior they able to mentor architecture share learn from each other and so this give and take Uh, happens in the tech community and that's what makes it uh, much more stronger than probably anywhere else on the world as far as android is concerned any la- uh, two or three major messages to developers in india what would those be yeah so uh, don't take uh, privacy and data protection very uh, lightly uh, users are becoming very smart very intelligent uh, people don't want Uh, the user feels that i don't want to be taken for a ride uh, and i don't want to be manipulated uh, so users are becoming because they they understand right so uh, we tend to assume that hey users don't care and things like that but that's not the case uh, so they're becoming more aware uh, more of these thefts and all those things come into their mind so they will switch off apps which is which they feel they can't trust Uh, and uh, and so you have to t- as a app builder you have to take privacy uh, data uh, protection uh, overall security of uh, his personal information has to be taken very clearly and then android 11 very clearly provides you a platform for that if you are as an app builder want to make sure your app uh, uh, has to take care of all these aspects then android 11 is the platform you need to probably move your app to uh, then second uh, is that if you want building apps uh so if you are on if you are using java or uh, uh, for building android based apps uh depending on the complexities of app you need to consider kotlin because uh people are saying it's faster it's much more intuitive the code lines are less and 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 your future investment is my, um, that much more protected by uh, using kotlin so I, i would say these are the two messages i want to leave with uh privacy data protection 
and uh, develop a productivity by using Kotlin are the key messages I want. Anything on the kind of apps that you think they should focus on? So personally, for me, I would want them to focus on the uh, on the on the uh, the new internet users. People are using entry level smartphones. People who are Indian language literate who don't know English. I think uh, we have a great opportunity for us to democratize uh, smartphones so that we uh, we get people from all spheres of life have have in a, use the power of the smartphone. Right? You should not limit to somebody who can't who can't probably uh, read and write English to be using the smartphone. They should be able to use the smartphone in whatever language they want. And even if they don't know to read or write, they should be still be able to speak to the app. So I, I would want our developers to build uh, for that because I think and that's a big challenge. It's not easy. Uh, I would not say that it's an easy problem to solve. Uh, it's a big challenge. How do you monetize? How do you do that? But I think once you crack it, uh, it, 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 it has a, multi, a big, a big impact because the user base is there. It's just that how do you, how do you come up with the first application, how you can monetize, how you build a business out there. Still early days, but I think that's where I would personally want people to focus on. Uh, my questions are over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about time. Uh, thank you, Karthik. Uh, thank you for thank taking you. us through that journey on Android 11 and Kotlin uh, and sharing your insights. Uh, it was a pleasure to host you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks thank a lot, Karthik. Great talking to you. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.